Greetings. This is Artie from Artifact Electronics. Last time we looked at a Williams Terminator 2 pinball, fixed a few electrical things, but didn't get to a point where we could actually play a test game on it. So that's kind of what we got on the plate for today. But first, uh, I wanted to start this off with showing a game. But if you remember, there are some bad connectors on this thing, burnt up connectors. And I figured let's give the uh, CPU board some love. Get rid of uh, the ugly stuff on here. And maybe then we can start a game. And here's the surgery I performed. This connector was essentially gone. I mean, its bits and pieces are here. One side still kind of looks okay, but we had a lot of loose pins. And uh, so this had to be replaced. And what happens here is that these pins, I guess, are kind of under spec for the amount of current that's running through. And uh, they start to oxidize. The oxi oxidization basically causes the resistance of the pin the connector to pin resistance to start going up and because of the amount of current flowing through it, it starts to arc. So it's kind of an avalanche effect. The more it arcs, the more carbon buildup we get on this. Here's a nice example and it just keeps arcing and having a small campfire killing the connector and the board and you just don't have good connectivity and things just don't work very well. So what I did was I replaced this connector. Of course this, this is a 12 pin connector. Of course I didn't have a 12 pin, I had a 16 pin. So using a Dremel tool I made a 12 pin out of it. I soldered it back into place. And this one was also kind of smoked. But only these last two pins. And since I am thrifty and I like to do things quickly. I took the remainder of this connector, made a two pin, and just put the two pin in here to replace that. And now I'm going to go through all of the pins and clean them up with the oxit. But we got good pins now on the uh, on the board itself, good connectors all around. One interesting thing over here to note was the last pin on this connector. This guy had basically blown a hole into the board. The plastic frame of the header was gone and there's an oversized hole right here that the pin was just kind of floating in. And uh, the former repair realized that. It had also lost connection to where it went on the other side of the board. And they stuck the pin in here and then they filled the hole with glue. I don't know what kind of glue, hot glue or epoxy or whatever it was. I mean, the minute the glue saw sold the soldering iron, it started to run away and the pin just fell out. I didn't have much more of a choice of how to fasten this thing, so I ran a, I ran a piece of solid wire up here. There's enough room for it to loop around the board. Wrapped it around the pin and soldered it in place. So it's kind of held in place from this side with the solder and the wire. And of course on the other side we have the frame, the header frame. So this pin should be held in place pretty securely. And the jumper wire jumps to the top of the board and connects to the trace that's also completely burned away here to make a secure connection. So what that connects to, and I have to make a correction to what I said last time, is uh, even though normally the, uh, the general illumination is tied to the transformer directly, and the minute you hit the power switch, the lights come on, but on these Williams machines, <clears throat> they actually have, I said six SCRs, I was completely wrong, there are only five triacs on here. As you can see, they are pretty heavily heat sunk over here, which, uh, you know, leads credence to these connectors burning up. 
you know, the amount of current flowing through here. These uh, five fuses over here fuse each one of the uh, triacs, and each one of the fuses is rated at 5 amps. So we could potentially be looking at 20, well, 25 max, but you know, this thing's probably cooking along nicely at about 20 amps uh, under normal working conditions. So these connectors, probably a bit under spec for that. I didn't, you know, upgrade the connectors or anything. This machine's going to be sitting in my collection and uh, it's not going to be on 24 7 as it was when it was a commercial money maker. Uh, so I think this repair would essentially make it last for a really long time, at least while it's in my position. So now, you know, you're probably expecting me to go and play a game on it, but uh, we still have to have a look at the other half of the plugs that go into these connectors, which uh, aren't in much better shape than the headers were. So let's have a look. So here's the other end of the story. This connector, the left side, it still looks good. We only have four wires on this one. It's an 11 pin. It's the one where I just changed the two pins at the right side. But uh, yeah, you can see this is a real nice job. Oh, this thing just came off. This one still looks good, but it's four wires that go into that connector that are going to be redone. And then the real bad part, of course, is this thing over here, which also uses tape. And I'm going to have to, uh, you know, I'm not going to trust any of this, the connections themselves. I'm going to go through the schematics and make sure that. Uh, this gets uh, hooked up correctly. One thing I already found is the wire colors lifted in the, uh, listed in the schematic don't match this. So, but remember this is coming straight from the transformer. So I can actually measure, uh, turn on, disconnect this thing and then measure what each wire carries to make sure that I'm going to put the right wire into the right connector. The wires to replace in the machine have been manhandled too badly and are too short to insert directly into a connector. So basically what I did was I made a new clean connector and I did check the schematics. Basically there's, a, there's two legs of AC going into multiple places feeding uh, both the common side and the uh, switch side of the lights. And then there's uh, one ground connection on this and this guy is going to end up in here and I'm just going to have to solder these wires. I'll probably shorten them as much as I can but uh, you know leave a little bit of slack in here so things don't uh, so things don't get stretched too badly. I have to make another connector like this for this guy over here. And again, as, as with the header, I didn't have the right size and you know, I had to Dremel one to the right size and I'll make one for here. This one's 12 pins, this one's 11 pins. Also give this one some wires and then go over to the machine and basically connect the ends together and see what happens then. So I made a connector of the right size. Yes, I didn't have an 11 pin either, so you just cut it and uh, fits very nicely. One thing to watch out for is that these connectors are keyed in, in that one of the pins over here is uh, cut off. And what you do is you insert a blind plug into that hole. So if you're trying to put this thing in here and it's not aligned, the blind plug will hit up one of the pins and not allow it to go in. The problem with this is finding these little plugs 
It's not always easy, but you know, here's the uh, cheap solution to that, and that is take a toothpick, put it into the plug in question. Let me make sure that I'm doing this on the right side. Yeah, the contacts are supposed to be here. Shove that into place, and then cut it flush. Wow, that took off like a rocket. So now what you have is, if you're offset, it won't go in. But if you're right on the mark, it'll go in just fine. Sure, if you shove it really hard, it'll probably shove the toothpick in there, but you know, I mean, use your brains when you're plugging this thing in and you're feeling a lot of resistance. Don't keep pushing. Something's wrong. So, that's for this. Let me put some wires, four wires on here, and then we can go and uh, make it rejoin the uh, the cabinet harness. Okay, this was fiddly work getting the wires connected. Especially since a lot of the wires were cut cut several times and were kind of short. So, but uh, here's the results. Here's the one guy that was completely burned up. He's all connected, and uh, the second guy is down here. Even though we replaced the uh, header on this one, I looked at some pictures and it's supposed to be plugged down here. Not that it makes a big difference. These two are identically wired, but we want to keep things looking as original as possible, even with those wire hacks in there. So now we get to the big test and see if all of the GI lights work. Okay, let's turn her on and see what happens. We got lights on the back box and on the play field. Okay, so let's go through a test here to make sure that even though they work, let's make sure that they're hooked up to the right places. General illumination. So basically everything's running totally low. All of them are on, but the brightness is one out of eight. So now we're at eight. We can see both chains on the back box are on. The right side of the play field, which are the pop bumpers and other lights, are on. And the CPU lights are on. However, when we look at the left side of the play field, nothing is on. They're all supposed to be on. And what we can do is step through this. So, first the top insert. That's controlled. Bottom insert. Uh, the right play field, that works. The CPU string, which is that rectangle in the beginning that even though it's on the play field, it's, it's basically not your regular control light, but uh, they control it as a GI string. And finally, the left play field, which really isn't doing a whole lot, but after checking around a bit, I found that the unthinkable happened. It looks like every single bulb that comprises the left play field GI is burnt out. And that may have something to do with the way uh, they did that beautiful wiring job in the back. You know, I don't know what they connected to that string, 
those are six six point three volt lamps, but uh, you know if they hooked up twenty volts to it or whatever, yeah, it'll take out the whole string. Now, how do I know it works? Well, those bulbs are kind of difficult to get to. I have to take a lot of the stuff off the top of the playfield, which isn't happening yet now, but I did find one place that was kind of easy, and that was the ball return lane over there. See that light in the middle? And uh, So it looks like all of the lamp chains for the GI work. So let's see, what does this look like with the lights turned off? would look a lot better if we had lights on the left too and of course as you can see up there there's many many bulbs that are burnt out and also those big bulbs are flashers let's see if we can go into test mode and see the flashers were also driven off the 20 volt line <clears throat> that drove the gun Okay, they call that the hot dog, that's working. But we can... Oh, they won't auto run through them. Oh, there you go. Well, you can probably not really see that because things are getting whited out. So let me turn the house lights back on again. And now we can kind of see that the flashers, some work, some don't, but uh, again, the flashers burn out too, but this kind of proves that the driver board is doing its job. Come on, hot dog light, there you go. So it looks like we got lights. Even though the play field's in really shitty condition, let's see if we can uh, bounce a ball around for a while at least. Well, there's Arnold with some lights. You look a lot better when all the bulbs are in there. And of course, the play field look better with all the bulbs in there. But I think we're ready to give it a try. Let's see if I can get the play field in here. Kind of. Okay. Here it goes. Judgment day. We need some more volume. Oops. The ball just went under the skull and it won't come out. It's the best shot. Oh, give me the gun. Fire and will. Great shot. Six point one seconds. Okay, 
the ball's still stuck under the skull. Come on, kick it out. Well, thank you. Fire and will. Yeah, I know I missed. Pop bumpers are kind of good. say video mode over here, but I guess that one wasn't lit up. So you can see... I'll be back. Yes, I'll be back. I'm going to have to see why the skull is acting up. But then again, it's a skull. See if I can find anything in there. And then we'll continue. Okay, so uh, went ahead and took care of the speaker. Yes, the speaker grill was kicked in. It's kind of flimsy anyway. And if we look at the speaker, somebody got pissed at the game and kicked it. So uh, we can see the cones ripped about. 30, 25 to 30 percent. What I did was replaced it with another speaker that I had, uh, I think I had rescued that one from some games that had been thrown out by a distributor. Uh, I was tempted to take the games, I think they were driving, Williams driving games, but basically the monitors were removed, things were ripped out of them, they didn't look like they would be worth restoring and I was told that they were going to the trash and I could take parts out of them. And uh, this speaker was something I took out of that. And it fits, form factor fits, it's a more powerful speaker but things are beginning to sound better. So then we get to the skull mechanisms. There's really two. The first one uh, is what raises and drops the uh, drop target that's in front of the skull entry. And that one had a wire broken off. Can you see that? This wire had broken off from the switch. So not only didn't the switch work properly, but since there's two green wires on it, it's in a chain on the switch matrix. And uh, so it probably disabled a bunch of other switches and uh, it never knew if and when the drop target was up or down so it actually just started to ignore the drop target another part was that 
Let's see if you can see that here. There is a switch underneath that where the blade gets pre the blade gets manipulated by the drop target, which is that black plastic part going up and down. When it goes down, it closes the switch, and when it goes up, it opens the switch, and that way the game knows where the drop target is. The problem is, right now, it is properly installed, as you can see the blade in the middle of the picture. However, when I first looked at it, it was the switch was installed in really weird fashion where the blade hung underneath here, underneath the plunger, and no matter what the plunger did, it the switch stayed open all the time. So that couldn't possibly work. I don't even know how that... Uh, I don't remember exactly how the switch was put in. I removed it and tried to figure out what was wrong with it. And then when I put it back, I guess I put it right back the proper way. And that switch is getting detected in test mode. So that much for the uh, drop target in front of the skull. Second part is is the part with the yellow coil on it, which is the up kicker. It's basically the ball falls into a saucer up here and pushes pushes down on this which causes a leaf switch, which is over here, to close, telling the game that there's a ball sitting in the saucer here, and uh, then it, it, it kicks it out, and what happens is the uh, solenoid, the plunger moves up and frees the switch, telling the game that, yeah, it got kicked out. And I couldn't exactly, it, it looked like the switch was kind of mashed together, always closed, and that's why the game was trying to kick out the ball all the time. And I think the problem is, I finally realized looking at the parts list, is kind of simple. There's supposed to be a grommet down here. See that hole there? There's supposed to be a, a rubber grommet in there that kind of keeps the plunger uh, extend it a little bit in the rest position. It's not supposed to go down all the way. But since that piece had disappeared or disintegrated or whatever, there was too much plunger travel and what that caused was the switch that you can see in the middle there. You know, the ball, it just pushed the switch too much and bent the switch down, which caused the switch to be closed permanently. So what I need to do is replace that grommet at the end and bend the switch back into place and that should make the skull work correctly. Alright, the brackets have been screwed back into place under the skull. Let's see if we fixed it. So in order to do that we need to start a game. Judgment Day. So let's get the ball. Now if we look under there, I don't know if you can see that. Well, it's hard to see, but the drop target is up. So now the drop target is down. And now... And it works. Let's do this again because I probably didn't have the camera centered. The drop target is up again. And now... And there you go. And will. All right. That's enough. We've got that part fixed. Now what I want to do is prove or disprove my theory that the entire left side, that all the bulbs are gone. I mean, we know that one of the bulbs 
works. But what I did was I removed the slingshot plastic over there that exposes two bulbs that are GI bulbs on the left side. So, let's get the bulb extractor. And then, and the new bulb comes on. So, I guess my theory was correct. And that all of the bulbs on that side, the left side of the play field, are out. So, I have to shop this, and shopping means no, not going to Nordstrom's and buying stuff, but rather removing everything from the top of the playfield, cleaning the playfield, removing all the dead bulbs, waxing the playfield, putting everything back again. Oh, and uh, putting all of the missing rubbers on, and of course removing all the old crumbly rubbers. And that's not really very interesting, so I will be doing that alone. Well, this is a good point on where to bring part two to an end. Got a bunch of stuff done on it. But uh, there's more to be done. One thing I found before uh, closing up the machine, I was just looking at the pop bumpers and these two kind of work, but I think the switches are dirty or need to be readjusted. But this one, the uh, coil is seized on it. So what happens is uh, the coil gets really hot because it's stuck on or whatever. And uh, basically the inner part of it starts getting so hot that the plastic sleeve melts and expands and uh, binds the plunger inside. So I got to take that thing out and need to get a coil, sleeve, maybe even a new plunger. And while I'm at it, I'll clean up the other two. So there's still work left. Thanks for watching. Let the thumbs ride high. Leave me a comment or several comments and make sure to subscribe. Next time this machine will look really good and we are going to be able to play a real game on it. See you then.